Okay, we're going to look at making a mock-up of a website in Adobe Muse CC. So I've created the site folder. Inside that site folder, I've just got some work files I've been using, but more importantly, I have an images folder, which are the images I will use in this site concept. They've all been optimized and scaled in a image editor, and they're ready to go. I'll open up Muse. First thing you need to do when you open up Muse is go to the file menu and get new site. Now here's the panel. Now you can have a concept for a desktop, a tablet or a phone, or you can create variants of that structure um, later on. Although it doesn't create, copy all the components on those variants, it, it will create the structure and all the links, but you will need to cut and paste the information and size it accordingly. Another important thing you need to note is Muse will not create responsive layouts for you. It will be totally static. Muse is more or less just for graphic designers laying up site concepts than it is experimenting with um, responsive design or as Reflow, Adobe Reflow or Macaw would do. Okay, so we're going to leave it on the desktop. We're going to leave it at 960 page width. I'll make a 1000 um, page height, but we can make that bigger later. I don't want any margins, so I click zero, and they will all go zero as long as that's locked. I want to have 12 columns to help me lay out my design, and I don't want any padding top or bottom. All right. Now you can change the rev resolution and make it for high def if you wanted. Now I'm ready to go, so I click OK. Now I'll just double click on the master page to show you the page layout. That's all laid out and we're going to use the master page in a minute. Go back to the site map, you'll see here it's got the home page. Now before I do anything, I will go file and I will go to save site. I will save it in my site folder and I'll call it Muse Project 1 and I'll save it in the right so that's saved first thing I need to do is make the, my site structure so I come up here and click the plus on the right I type in about now these are the titles of the page not the file name so you can have them in uppercase I'll do gallery and then finally I'll have one that has contacts now once that's set up I'll need to spell that right. Contact. Once that's set up, I now can do my master page. But before you do that, you can actually get um, sub pages from those. So you can have child pages from the main pages. If you're going to get rid of a, a page, you just click up there and delete it. So my site structure is set out. It's important you do that. So you've done some planning and you know what the site structure is going to be. You can zoom in and zoom out of this up here. You can also later on add variants for tablet and phone. You can switch up the top between design. Also, you can preview it if you wanted to, to see what it's going to look like. And then you can publish at the end. If I go back to plan. It'll give my site map. First of all, I'll just double click on here, the master page up here. And you'll see this is where the um, sort of the header where you can put a navigation bar and a footer down the bottom and that's what we're just going to do here i'm going to get my rectangle tool i'm going to click up the top and i'm going to drag it and drag it right out like that okay so once i've got that and i've dragged it out i will change its color so i'm going to make it black and i've got that set up you'll see it's in the layers over here it's got rectangle now i will just double click on the layer there and I will call this header, put it in lowercase, and I'll click OK, and there's my rectangle. So I'm just going to call this, um, OK, I've got my rectangle. Once I've got that, I will then lay out um, another element at the bottom. So I'll just go down the bottom and I'll click New Layer. I'll rearrange that layer so it's underneath, and I'm gonna call this footer. Double click on it, call it footer. So that's gonna be the footer of my page. Now inside the footer, I'm gonna get another element and drag out another rectangle and put it inside these guides here. 
and then finally I'm going to fill it in and make that black too. I get the move select tool um, up at the top and now I've got that and you'll see it's inside here. You could add other elements like information, you can even make it bigger if you wished, but we place that down at the bottom. Now on the navigation bar, I need to put an, a navigation widget. So I go to the widgets on the right, the widget library. I go down to menus and it has horizontal menu and vertical menu. I'm gonna go for a horizontal menu. I'm gonna drag that out onto the page and here it is. Now you'll see it's used all our pages to create our um, elements for each of these in our, our sort of link list. Now, I need to sort of customize that because I'm going to have it on top of here uh, eventually. Now, I need to make sure it's in the right layer. So if I go to layers, you'll see the menu is in the footer. Now, I click on here, and I'll drag it and put it here uh, back in the header. So that's quite good. So when I move that up with a bit of luck, it'll be on the top. Now I'll move it over and sort of line it up. Now I've got it set up there. Now, next thing I'll do is I want to change the font to begin with. So I just double click and go right down to the home and that's selected. Now, if I zoom in here, we'll have a better idea of what's going on. So I'll just go up to the top, I'll zoom in. And here is my block. I've got that selected. I'm going to change the font. A number of ways I can change it up here, or I can go to the text over here and change it here. Now the fonts, um, these are recently used ones. You have two choices. One, to have a web font, and those are ones you brought in from Adobe uh, Typekit. So I click on here, you can select a font and bring it in, and that keeps it inside your Muse program. Or I can go and use a web safe font. What you don't want to do is use the bottom ones, which is the system fonts, as it warns you that it exports it as an image. That's not good. You need to export them as a font. So you've got two choices. Use one of the web safe fonts here or bring in one from Typekit. Now I've already done that. So I'm going to click on San, um, Source Sans Pro. I'll just come down and make it regular. Now, once I've changed one, it changes them all. So that's um, certainly pretty good that it's done that. Now, what I can do is I click on the block on the background. I can then change the, the, the base color for the background here and change it to something else. So I click the, and if I go up to the fill, I can actually turn that off. So it's turned it off there. Now, the only issue that I have now, it's turned off them all. If I go to states, It'll show me the state. So when it rolls over, it does this. When it has mouse down, it does that. And if it's active, it does that. Now, if that they're the things you actually want, you know, you can keep those, or you could turn those off and change, you know, the colors for something else, or you can just have it so it it highlights. Now, I'll probably just leave it on there, but that's what you would do. Okay. Now, once that's done. Um, I can then make sure I've saved it and it's up to date. I can go back to my project and you'll see it's on all the pages up at the top. Now the next thing I'll do is go for the home page and I'm going to put in my banner. Now I go to the layers and here it's got the header and it's got a footer on there. So it's got, got those elements on there. Now I'm going to put a banner underneath here. So I'm going to put the hero banner underneath. So what I do is I go to the file menu and I go down to place. Now I need to go into my site folder. I've created banner images and I've got a banner up here and I click it. It sticks to my cursor and I'm gonna have it full sort of width of the page. So I click here and I drag it out and hit there. So there is my very large banner. So once that's on, I will need to put some buttons on there. So you'll see it's put it up in the header up at the top. So that's quite good. And it's got the hero banner. It's put it up at the top. Now I need to put some buttons on there. So I will go up and maybe you can either zoom in from here or I can get here and I can zoom in a little bit more there. All right. So once that's done, I can get T for text. I'll just click here and drag out a box. Once I've got that, I'll just type in hello world. 
Now I'll highlight that, I'll change it, make it white, and then I will take the heading up and make it something bigger. And once I've made it bigger, I'm going to change the font. So I can go to the text over here, up here, and I'll just change it for my uh, font I'm using, the Source Sans Pro. And then I can move in my box like that, make sure it's aligned up on the grid. Second thing I'm doing is putting a subheading. But before I do that, you'll see I've got the text open. So I will click here and open it up. Right down the bottom, it says P tags, and this puts tags on it. And I click there, and I'll change that to H1 to keep it all organized, especially if you're going to temporarily put it on the website to show other people to try and you know keep some sort of semantic structure. Next thing I'll do, get another text box. I'll drag that out across here like that. I'm going to paste in some uh, subtext in there. So I've got that placed on. Let's just delete some of the stuff I don't need. And then first of all, I'll highlight it. Uh, make it white. Then I will change the font size. So I'll take it up a bit. Like that. Oops, too much. Let's take it about there. And then once I've got that, I will change it into um, a sort of sans. I've got that there. Uh, and then finally, I'll just come up here and again change that to bold. Okay. So once that's been put up, I will put some buttons on there. So I will go down and I will get the um, rectangle tool. I'll hover over here and drag out um, a button across here like that. And once I've done a button, I want to make it to a ghost button. So up at the top, it has no fill. That's good. This one, the stroke, I need to make it white and I need to make it one pixel. Now this time I'll blow it up a little, oops, I'll just blow it up a little bit more and you'll see it's got one pixel. Now I can change the radius, here is the radius, so I can come up here and I can change it a little bit more. I'll just make it four. Now once I've got that, I can drag out some guides and using these to make sure I've got the uh, guides on here like that. So I can see where the center is. And then finally, I'm going to click on the my text tool, drag out a box, and I'm going to type in learn more. Once I've got that, I will make it white. I will then take the font up a little bit more to 24. And then also, I will change it to... Another, I think that's too light. Come in here. Uh, let's see, regular. Okay, we got that. Now I'll center it in the box, and then I can move the box a little bit in, and move it in a little bit more there, and then I can line it up uh, with the text to make sure it's in the center, and everything's fine. Now, when I zoom out now, you'll see how it's panning out. And then the final thing I'll do is shift click those two elements like that. Shift click there and shift click here. Right mouse click and we're going to group them together. So we group them. Now if I go to the layers, you'll see what's happening here. That's the group here. So that's on learn more group. So I've got that in there. Now I'm going to just, uh, with that selected, hold, hold alt and shift and drag and that will copy and drag it out, constrain it to those proportions. Here it is, another group. So I will change my learn more. So if I get my text, I can click in here and I can just type in sign up. And then I can click on the actual button. So I select the button in the background. And this I need to chain, take the stroke off. I need to change the fill to another color there. A little bit darker, I'll click on this one. Right, so I've got that. 
Okay, so that's all sort of lined up and done. Now what I will do is link them. So I'm going to link them to the pages. So I click on the learn more button group. I go up to where it's got add uh, the hyperlink and I'll link it to about. Then I'll click on my sign up and I'm going to link that onto contact. Okay, that'll just make it into a link. Now I'll save that. I go to file and I go preview page in the browser. Now, if you're using something like a PC, it might default and open up to a Explorer window, which you don't want. So you might have to just cut and paste this address into something like uh, Fireworks or Chrome. Now, there it is. There's our site. You'll see the footer down at the top. You'll see we've got these links here, and also these are working as links as well. So when we go here, now you'll see when I've done that, it's coming up saying it can't find it. So we'll see how we can fix that. If I go back to Muse, I go to File. This time, I'll go Preview Site in the browser. And what that will do is cache up all my pages. So if I click on About, it'll go to About, and it'll go to Gallery, and it'll go to Contact. Now it's done all these, which is have all the actives on there, and also I can use these to go around. So that's all working. You don't have to link all these things together or create these, so that's worked out really well. Okay, right, I go back here in Muse. Now what I will do is create um, some content on the page. So I'll just zoom out a bit. Down the bottom, you've got the footer, and if I drag that down, I can do that. Then also you can just go a little bit further. Um, I'll add some content on there. Now I'll bring in another image, um, but before I do that, I'm gonna close up the header. So I've got the header and then I've got the footer. And what I'll do is make another, another layer. I'll drag that layer in between the header and the footer to keep a good hierarchy on how I'm working. And then double click on it, and I'm gonna call this um, body on there and I click OK and I've got a body section up. Now I'm going to put the elements in here. So first I'll just go to the file menu and I'll go place. I go up and I look for images and I've got block images here and I can click on here and then I can bring in an image. It has it here and I can just drag that out using the uh, column structure and then I can reposition it how I wish on there. Now I'll just zoom in on that to see how it's working out and make sure it's all sort of lined up and I'll just put some text at the side. So first I'll just get some uh, the text tool, I'll drag that right out there and I'll put uh, just I'll just say header, this is where the header should go. I'll highlight that and I just made to make it a bit bigger, uh, maybe bigger still. There we go. I'll just close that box up like that. Now again in the text I go down to the bottom as I did before and I'll make this subheading 3 so we're keeping a good hierarchy and sem semantic um, naming structure. Once that's done I create another text block underneath that, drag it out there, place it over here and then I'll paste in some text in there, some body text. Now I highlight that text with the text panel. I can actually take up the line spacing and make it a little bit more. You can change the font if you wanted to. Um, it's up to you. I'll just go for here for regular. All right. Okay, so you've set all that up. So that's the first component set up. I'll go to the um, layers and you'll see it's in the body. So that's quite good and organized. Then I'll uh, just leave that as it is. That's our first page. You probably obviously have to add other elements on there. But I will go file and I'll just preview the page in the browser. And here we have it. So we've got that page element on there. You'll see these things are not responsive. So that's what you've got to bear in mind. But you can see that sort of working out on there. Right, now once that's done, um, I'll go off and go back to Muse. Okay, so once that's on there, I will now go to my master project page. I would double click on here, and I've got my second page which comes up on here. 
Now, what it will do is I will put some um, information on here. So this is going to be about paid. So I'll put three images on there. So I'll go up to the place and I'm going to go to where my faces are. Let you go to images, faces, and I can just shift click each of those to select them, click open, and you'll see it's sticking to my cursor. I've got number three at the end of it. So all I would do is drag out one image on here and move across and I drag out another image, make sure I've got them sized up okay. And then finally, I will drag out another image on here. Okay. So I've got those three images. Now, I might take that sort of over here like that. And then I might move this image over in the center here. So I've got that centered. So I've got those three images um, across the right. So I've got those placed on. Now what I'll do is I'll just put again, as I did before, I'll put something underneath. I'll put make sure I select it and make it bigger on that, maybe too big, make it 30, come across here, and make sure it's centered, and once I've got that, I can match that down a bit. And again, Alt and Shift, I'll just drag that out place it here make sure it's all okay and then and finally I'll do the last one and then again drag that out and place it on here like that right so I place that on the page and this could be just some information you're putting on the page you can come off and, and, and put down a background border, certainly on the page. You can have it going, you know, right across your page or somewhere you would you want, like that. Then I could come up and change its color, um, like that. Then come back and then you could have some uh, text placed on the, like that. text box and just place it on there like that I'll put in some text and then make that text a bit bigger oops too big okay so that's just how you would go about doing some you know just general sort of mock-ups and I could drag that out move this all up a bit like that then I could just shift click these elements and move them up so you can get an idea of how you could lay up that structure of the page and um, have it structured in a modern design. Right, so I'll save that. So that's another page down. Now I'll go back to my uh, project here, map. I click on here, just double click, bring my library up. This time I'll just put four images on there. So I go to the file menu and I say place. I go back up here. I've got my image block images, one, shift click each of those click on there and then again just bring up here I drag it out that's my first one St the other three are stuck on here and I drag that out and then I drag that out and then I come along and I drag the last one out like that there you go so I've got those images on here maybe bring it in a little bit like that. so I've got that laid up so that's my gallery page or represents a gallery page just nudge those down I'll just save that and then finally go back to the project sitemap double click on the contacts page um, now the contacts I can now put in a widget so I click on the widget and what you do have is you have form elements so on here we've got um, details and we've got a simple one so I'll just drag the simple one and place it on the page now what it will do is change things around and you know you can add different things as phone numbers and different information that you can put on there and you can place that and have it on the page wherever you would want it and I could come along and certainly uh, 
place that there and put some other elements on there so it could have contacts or whatever you wanted to be on the page. Okay, so if then I go file, save, and if I went to file and preview site in the browser, it brings it up. Uh, here's my page like that. That's my landing page and you'll see it's got a footer down the bottom. I go to about, here's my about page and you'll see um, those ones are stretching you know right across if they're on the edge they're going right across the edge then I go to the gallery here's my gallery page and then I go to my contacts and again that will work as a contacts now we're back in Muse now when you are finished um, you can come along and export um, your site. You can certainly upload it to a browser, but you can go export as HTML. Now it does want a uh, sort of a URL web, web address, so we can just go uh, your site. Now this might need to be a real one if you have links for um, web fonts, etc. Then I need to navigate to where I'm going to uh, save it onto my desktop I save it in my Muse site and what I will do is click choose and then I'll say OK and it will export those pages um, comes up with the contact form I've got a few problems with that but that's fine now what I will do is close these down like that open up here now what it's done it's saved all those inside here so we have our Muse file and then also we have our each of our documents and then it's also created some scripts for us as well form scripts etc js files and also it's created some style sheets for us as well okay and all i will do is i'll come over here and drag out the index here we are right so here's my page here's my uh, landing page if we go to about we have the about page we go to the gallery we can go to the contacts with the form. I can go back to the home page. This links to the go back to the home page and the sign up links to here. So that's just a simple way of just creating a, a you know little layup and then it does export it to HTML pages and you can preview it in the in the browser. It is limited that you can't do some of the stuff you might do in Reflow to do a responsive design, but it's a very good way of doing quick prototyping.